Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris. In this video, I want to start playing with this Neonode Z-Force air sensor. I've been asking what to do with it. Someone suggested that I should do a control panel of some sort to the CNC machine. That did cross my mind. I have not heard any better suggestions yet, so if you have a good idea of what I should do with it, then please do let me know in the comments. Today, the idea is I'll make myself familiar somewhat with this sensor and at least figure out how to talk to a computer or, or an Arduino. I'm not sure what we're going to use this is the interface card for it using those pins we can probably get it to talk to an arduino the box suggests to get started visit support.neonode.com we should do that i guess if you've been wondering what this sensor is what this does once placed on a flat surface looks at a square area in front of it this area becomes a touch screen multi-point touch screen not really a screen but a touch sensitive area where you can tap something and use that as an input interface it's really interesting this. It works on the principle of reflecting infrared off of your fingers that you place in front of the sensor. I would hope today to at least figure out how responsive it is, how far we can reach down and how repetitive it is and, and so on. So at least we, we know a little bit more about it before we make a decision on what to do with it. Maybe that will help us get started. Get help with Neonode Z-Force air sensors. Okay, let's do the getting started. Connect the sensor according to connecting sensor. Use the new node workbench software for Windows to configure a sensor and evaluate touch performance. Only 3 megs, so very small download. And this is what we are greeted with when we open up the workbench. Did we open something? No, we haven't got open workspace. What do we do? Hold on, there was a folder workspace. That was supplied in the download. Okay, we've got something. I'm going to plug in the USB right now. A green light comes on on the driver board. Well, it's not a driver board really because there is no nothing active on that. Is there any installation happening? No. Should we press the button? No, nothing happens. Let me unplug it and I'll press and hold the button while plugging it in. Maybe that does something. No, the device is in wrong mode or, or disabled. Very often it is the case that the problem is between the seat and the steering wheel. I have plugged it in backwards. So this connector here is not keyed. I have managed to plug it in the other way and that's why it wasn't working. It is detected now. We've got some info on here. Uh, platform version, protocol, device, tracking, visualizer. Oh, oh, check this out. So, oh, it's backwards. Hello, it is working. So how far can it detect? This is the this is the bottom of the detection screen. Can it do two? Okay, it can do two fingers. Can it do three? No. Okay, so works with up to two points. It can track two points on, on the area in front of it. I might replace my mouse with this. Of course, there are problems with this because it wants to see objects. So if you have one finger and another one behind, it will... Yeah, there could be a point where it's not visible. So it kind of loses the track of it. But this is really cool. It's rather smooth and accurate and quite responsive. Sometimes it comes up with a second finger on the when I hold one of my other fingers on the hand too low. I think somewhere in software it completely ignores if it's not a point. It works with non-finger objects. Oh, interesting. So it sees this as two points because it's so... Yeah, it doesn't like that. It's too too wide. It must be optimized to objects up to a certain diameter. Now we can reverse it. So if we reverse X, still backwards. Okay, sub area, reverse X, send config. Okay. Now we got it to work the right way. Can we do hello again before it expires? When I move my finger very quickly, you can see the individual points where it does the detection. So I'm sure there must be a frequency of how often it detects. 
Okay, check this out. In the device configuration, I could change the number of reported touches to 8, then send the config. I've also increased the finger frequency to 200 from 100. Presumably that will be the update rate. Right now, I can do one finger, 2, 3, 4. Of course, it starts getting funny because it's I'm 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh... Let's do 8 somewhere. There we go. So it gets a little bit difficult, but it can definitely track more than 2. So yeah, 8 is a bit of a stretch, I think. But uh, if we change it to 5, maybe. Well, it allows us to go to stupid numbers, but I'm sure that's not going to be very practical. So let's change it to 5. That's 4. And with my thumb, yeah. This is quite cool. So it is a truly multi-touch device. Uh, let's see if we can increase that frequency even higher. So let's bump it up to 400. And now, yeah, that's definitely the frequency. And you see, now there is far less of that spottiness because the updates are much more often. Okay, so let's see if we change it to detection HID. Oh, now I'm controlling the mouse. But it's not relative, so if I... You can't do this like you would with a trackpad just to scroll to the left or right. You have to physically reach. It detects the tap. Yeah, this could work as a mouse. I could see that working as an interface for a computer. Maybe with a few software tweaks. I need to get it connected to an Arduino and play with that that way and see if I could, you know, work on touches in certain areas and maybe just get a wood panel to work as an interface for the CNC, configure some basic movement and jog and that sort of stuff. This is the Neonode ZForce Air Sensor. Really cool tech. Works straight out of the box as long as you plug it in correctly but you can't blame them for that. That's me being silly. This is how I plugged it in initially but so the way it's meant to go is this way. But it's designed well enough that it didn't destroy itself. I vaguely remember having a USB tablet, I guess, you know, an input device, a small thing with a mouse pad and a silver bar at the top and it came with a pen and with the pen you could move around and draw screens like, like the graphics tablet. I couldn't work out at the time, it was a long time ago, how was it working because the pad was just, you know, a mouse pad, there was no conductive layer on it or anything like that, so I thought that was quite mysterious how that worked. The top of it resembled this sensor quite a bit. I think I still have that tablet pad somewhere in the attic. I'm going to have a dig for it and see if I can find it and then we can take that one apart. I'm quite sure that this will be very same tech, very same way of detecting points. For this video that's it. It's getting late so I need to get ready for work tomorrow but I will come back to this very shortly with more updates and more playing about how to get it to work with Arduino and see if that's somewhat simple. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this a little preview of what this can do. Please do subscribe for more random electronics related stuff. For today that's it. So take care.